In this video, I'll be doing a Throne of the Four Winds boss breakdown and show you guys how we deal with the bosses to get the best boss results out of them. Before getting into the video, I would like to mention that only 23% of you guys watching are subscribed. If you'd like to help me grow this channel and continue making videos, consider subscribing. Now let's get back on the topic of this video. Conclave of Wind is a very straightforward and simple boss once your raid has a good chunk of DPS and they can one face the bosses that they start on. Usually, if you're a good raid, you won't be having any healers on either of the platforms besides Nazir. So if that's the case for you, make sure you have Hellstones and personal cooldowns ready for the storm on the Rohash so you don't die to the boss. As you can see on the screen here, we went from two healing to solo healing the fight now, and we have four people on each platform of the boss. And once each of them are dead, we go straight to Nazir. We don't wait for the other group at all. Obviously, we do wait for the last, so when everyone is gathered, we just send the last and pump the boss. On this roster, we actually have a lot of alts, so our DPS is a bit down. I would suggest not having four people on Rohash, as it's a bit of an overkill and boss dies way too fast. If you believe in the three DPS that are DPSing Rohash and you think they're way too high on damage, just send one guy on Azir and it's gonna be completely fine. Also, if you have no healers on Rohash, I suggest using Faint on the Rogue, on the Storm ability, and if you're a Paladin, make sure that you use Shield Wall and hand sack some other player, and get the use of your Lay on Hand because it's really helpful in case someone might die because the Storm wasn't pushed fast enough. I believe 3 ticks of the Storm can easily kill all of you already, so you need to make sure that it dies within the first tick or the second one. Something that a lot of tanks are used to already is that they keep Nazir on the far end of the room and every time you have to jump over to kill it, it's way too far and you have to usually walk around 10 seconds before you reach the boss. So just let your tank know that once the boss is 20% on Rohash and Nanshal, just tell him to move to the Alakir pillar so you don't have to walk that far and you have no downtime on the DPS. That's it for this boss, there's nothing much to say about it, it's a very tank and spank boss fight where you just sit till the boss dies and then move on to the next one. Alakir is two different wards in 25 and 10 men. In 25 men, the boss is really hard in phase 1 and then it gets progressively much easier as it goes, but in 10 men, it's different. So, the ideal way to do this boss is that you want to skip out the first vein burst that happens in 25 or 10 men. This is very rough in 25 men because the boss's health is much higher, but in 10 men, it's a breeze, you can easily do it with just 2 minute cooldowns and no problem. If you do struggle to push the vein burst before it happens, then just use Lust, it's not the biggest deal in the world. And on Rogue, if you would like to actually press Killing Spree on this boss, you need to ask your raid leader to put you behind the boss exactly right under it so you can Killing Spree and then just get ported back where you were standing. Keep in mind during phase 2 the tornadoes are very random and they might be behind the boss already and if you do killing spree then you will get caught up in them and die without anyone being able to heal you or grip you out of it. So the way to parse on this boss is to control these stormlings that spawn. Each gives 10% DPS increase to the boss and you want to kill these based on a timer where you gain the buff as you go into the phase 3 intermission without losing it. Meaning once phase 3 intermission happens, there should be a stormling already at 10% or lower HP which is dotted and while your debuff is running out, this stormling dies and refreshes it as you get out of the intermission. Therefore, you can have a full uptime on the buff. Usually, some people use Guardian and Potion on this. I don't think if you should be delaying your cooldowns this long for this, because it might go wrong, you never know what happens, and then you didn't even cooldown on the 30% or beyond. So, do with this information what you will, because I can't really suggest what you should do. It is very random if the stormling dies or not, so if it doesn't die, then you just ruined your paths because you never cooldowned, and so on. So the way my 10 man does the stormlings is around the 1 minute timer where we push the boss already, 50 seconds after it the first stormling spawns and we kind of immediately kill it but not really, we just wait to see the second stormling and then kill the first one. But any stormling after the second one just dies immediately. So we don't wait for them anymore, 
we just make sure that the second one dies very late into the debuff so we don't just lose them randomly if the third and the fourth one are too slow to spawn make sure that you ask everyone to send their pets back in front of the boss because if you don't do this then the storpling is going to be very far away and delay your killing time and you will risk losing the debuff And as I said, the ideal way to kill this boss with the Stormlings is if the first Stormling dies around 115 into the fight, the second one dies exactly 15 seconds after that, and the next ones die the moment you see them. It doesn't really change much if you kill them any later because you will push the boss a lot faster than usual, and by the time you're at 25% you will see that the fifth one has probably spawned like 5 seconds before it, and you kind of want to focus that and make sure it's at 10% with dots on it, so it dies as you push the boss to There might be a way to parse on rogue very hard on this boss, but I'm not really sure about. Rogues could actually glyph faint and have a beacon from a paladin and just send full blade flare damage onto the stormlings, while everyone else is just blasting the boss, but I haven't done that yet before myself. You might die, you might not, I'm not really sure. But if you want to try this, that's I'm 100% certain that you can't die if a paladin is actually pumping heals into you and maybe a priest heals you sometimes. But it is very healing intensive, at some point you might have to be cloaking the rain debuff out and using faint all the time is essential for this method. But anyways, Alakir and Conclave of Wind are kind of similar bosses, you just stand still and kill them. There's not a lot of movement. I'm pretty sure you guys already know how phase 3 works, I'm not gonna give you a headache for that one. But do let me know if you tried any of my methods and if they worked out for you, or if you got any good parses out of it, down in the comments below. I will be doing a BWD guide in a few days, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video if you want to stay tuned for that one, and I will see you guys in the next one. Enjoy!